session and uh, we've spoken about GDPR a lot. So if anyone's got any questions throughout this, feel free to, to, to ask. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll chat about it and keep it a bit more engaged. So, I was asked to, to come and give a presentation on GDPR from a data process perspective. So hopefully I can talk, talk about the journey that we've seen in the company I'm with. Um, what issues we've seen, how we overcome them, and what issues I potentially see in the future as a result of GDPR. So first of all, who, who am I? Uh, I work for a company called Capta, um, which is, is, is a big beast. It's about, about 100,000 employees, about 300 different businesses make up the group. Uh, and I'm a, I'm a divisional security officer for, uh, for Capta Software Division. So I've worked at Capta for about four years now, um, but in that time as well, I was also a, a, a security, a senior a security consultant, so covering data protection, cyber security, things like that. Before Capita, I worked for British Aerospace over in Barrow, Barrow and Furnace on the nuclear submarines, the successor project. That was up to deal with uh, top secret UK eyes only nuclear material. And before then, uh, my cyber journey started in the RAF police, where I was a uh, Protective Security NCO, uh, dealing with counterintelligence and, and espionage. So that's how I got into security, um, but for my sins I'm now uh, in Capita. So who are Capita? Uh, I can pretty much guarantee that everyone sat in this room right now has been affected by Capita. They run pretty much the infrastructure of the UK, um, quite a large company, as I said there's about 400 different businesses make up Capita. So that's, that's all there, we've got Capital Group at the top, where our, our board and the investors sit. And then it's split into, currently, uh, six different divisions. So we, we've gone through a restructure from around 12 divisions down to six, and there's one of me in each division. So my division's the one on the, on the right here. Uh, so any business unit within Capita that, that either creates, sells software as a business, this is where they sit. And we, we were about 35 businesses strong, Every business is a completely different legal entity with, a, with an MD, an FD, uh, full, full support structure, and we operate in pretty much every industry going. So some examples there are healthcare, education, secure, uh, so in government agencies and defence, financial uh, utilities, agriculture, legal, we've pretty much got our fingers in every pie. So when someone mentioned GDPR to me, it was an absolute nightmare. So you may have come across, um, has anyone heard of Capita or, yeah? yeah. <laughs> Should I just leave now? <laughs> right, so, so the reason GDPR was, was, was quite big to us is because as it was such a big company, it was so complex, uh, 300 businesses, different legal entities, and we integrate quite heavily into our own businesses, but it's the data we've got. I mean, some examples are, Sims, has anyone got children? Okay, so we've got a product called Sims, and it's one of my division's uh, uh, software software services. And Sims is, is using around 22,000 different skills in the UK currently. That's that's expanding as we speak. Um, they're also going into foreign markets as well, including Europe. So Sims has been around for a number of years, and what it is, the old school of attendance registers and sheets is no more. It's all digital. So we've got. At attendance, we can look after the school's performance, at the, the child's performance. We also have the teacher's records in there. We've got the parents' records. If a kid, if a kid goes on a, on a trip, pictures go into there and we can share them with the parents. An absolute GDPR nightmare. So if you think how long Sims has been going, we have the parents in there, the school ch uh, teachers. Uh, school children from, from, from a whole raft of years, pretty much, uh, I think 87% the population is touched by SIMS, and that's just one of our products. We've got a hundred different products in my division. So we are uh, quite affected by GDPR. Other examples are uh, when you phone 999, uh, the system that tasks resources out to SIMS, so ambulance fire, that's all our software. We've got a new piece of software now when you phone 999. If you've got a smartphone, we can activate the cameras, so rather than just hearing what's going on, it records as well for using evidence and also for the operator to see what's going on. And another, so that's again one of our products. Another one is Pay360, which is a payment card processor. 
uh, and uh, I think there's 9.5 9 billion transactions go through Pay360 a year. And payment card data, PCI, is affected by GDPR in exactly the same way as a name addresses. Um, so that, that's just three examples of how we're affected by GDPR. So a lot of people don't know this, but uh, Capture Software, my division, we're actually the, the top fifth software provider in the world, which I, I think is quite impressive because when you think of software providers, you think of Microsoft, Oracle, your, your big players, but we are actually, um, we're pretty much integrated with, with, with every industry. Probably. So what I'm going to talk about today, and I'm not here to sell services by the way, I'm here to talk about the issues we've had uh, under GDPR. So, my job is security officer for, for one of the divisions, and what I've typically found in, in, in my industry is GDPR was lumbered with the security. I don't know if that's similar to, to you. So I, I stepped into the, the, the DSO role two years ago, and it, the board just went, GDPR, sort us out, whatever you need to do. No one really knew what it was or how bad it was going to be. Um, so they didn't know how to start. How do we integrate with so many biz businesses? Uh, what resources and support do we need? Do we, do we look down the consultancy route? We've got a hundred different products. How do we even look at that? So what I'm going to talk about is, well, what did you understand GDPR? The GDPR project. Using GDPR to our advantage, I suppose. And then the future. So understand the GDPR. So someone made this, this uh, point earlier. It, it's the GDPR is the next progressive step from Data Protection Act 98. I disagree with that. And I was at a conference last last year. It was CloudSec actually. There, there was a there was a lawyer speaking from PwC. You would think the GDPR or the DPA 19, uh, 19, uh, sorry 2018 is a natural step from 1998. However. There was only something like 34% of industry in the UK were actually compliant with DPA 98. They were actually only compliant with uh, 1984. So basically, we should have just stepped one, but there's two steps in there. So that's why I think it's been quite, quite a big impact on, on our businesses. So we are typically a data processor. All we want to do really is sell, sell a bit of software. We might post the data for you as part of the service. So in the past, we weren't really affected by DPA 19. Yes, we had some obligations to meet, but the risk wasn't really there on data processors. It, we had liability insurance if something went wrong, but ultimately, if there was a data breach, we just had to report to our customer, and that was it. We never really seen anything from it. It was the controller that was liable. And obviously, the maximum fine of a DPA breach was 500 grand, and I don't think the ICO has ever enforced a, a 500 grand fine uh, yet. Then all of a sudden, GDPR comes along, firmly puts processes in the crosshair. So our risk profile went from, we can do things over here, skirting the law, or, or skirting the rules, to now we've, we've, we've completely got to change culture, we've got to embed it in all practices. So that was probably the biggest impact against the data processor. We always, you had obligations of DPA, but there were instances of where it, was, where it wasn't followed. And that's typically because the type of business we are, we grew by acquisition. We, we bought small software companies, typically didn't have any governance at all. So we, we've grown through this, uh, the, the, this acquisition. Um, and that, that, that has had an impact on the GDPR project. So first of all, we have to say, right, are we a data processor? We, we always thought we were. But as you start to realise and look into it a bit more, the relevance where we were with data controller. So that, that's one of the first issues we came across where we had always thought we processors, but actually as we understood it, start to look into a bit more. We were controllers in quite a lot of instances. So as a software company, if we used any data to do any development, so we wanted to create a new product potentially, straight away data controller. So the more we looked at this, the more, the more businesses we looked at, the processes and how we would use the data, straight away we weren't just a processor, we were, we were finding things. Other elements were, obviously if we, if we sell a software product, uh, we provide support as part of that product, which is normal. If anyone wants to raise a ticket on that ticket system, we're the controller for that. Because we're the ones asking for, for the data needed to uh, process that support request, 
and also what we found is our customers would take screenshots of cases containing very, very sensitive, highly sensitive information because we operate healthcare, uh, defence government, schools, um, and we, our ticket systems were uh, housed information we didn't even know about. So I was given the project of, of GDPR, go fix it, whatever that means. Uh, so first thing I had to do really was understand what it was and I had to get the support of the business behind me. So quite early on, I delivered a presentation to the divisional senior management team. And at the time, we had a new CEO that just come in. And funny enough, he was actually brought over. So I, I, I give, a, give a half hour presentation on our quarterly review around what it is, how it's going to affect us, the fact the fines are so enormous. Uh, and, and he completely bought in and said, you've got my full back in. This is a critical risk in our risk register. Let me know what you need. So that was the first issue, or well, the, the first positive thing. Because normally what you find in security, you don't get the, you don't get the, the budget or the, the material you need to do the job. So this all of a sudden opened doors, and anything I was asking for, they were saying, yeah, that's fine, get it done, because I had the backing. So the reason it was such a big impact to a capital business, because like I said, there's 300 different businesses make up the entire group. If any one of our business units breached or caused the shine of wanted attention, got the ISO involved, then potentially, well, obviously, the 4% fine that you can face is off CAPS and PLC's global annual turnover. So it wasn't just a business risk, it wasn't just a divisional risk, it was a group risk. And that's why we had to take it quite seriously. And obviously, if there was a breach, uh, you can get the. All of a sudden, we went from paying. Uh, no fines, no compensation to potentially having a 4% fine, being liable to class action or compensation, to potentially being, uh, uh, getting bans or, or post limitations on, on process and personal data, and, and, and not to mention the reputational damage because everything now looks published. Okay? So the, ho the whole aim of my GDPR project was to not be in the newspaper post uh, 25th of May. So didn't just have to sell it to the division, I had to sell it to each of the MDs of the businesses in the division, so I had to go around every business and do the same presentation to get their buy-in. But we also had to have the support group because our practices, the, the, the integrations we've got with the businesses, rely on other capital businesses out with our division. So we had to, to get the buy-in from absolutely every angle for this project to work. So what do we do? GDPR project. So obviously, the first thing you, you think was, like, well, what is it? What, what is the GDPR? Let's have a read of this GDPR standard, which isn't very nice. Really. So we thought, right, okay, we'll, we'll get some resources. So we, we got some, we got engaged with some consultants quite early on, just to give us presentations initially around what GDPR is, uh, how would it uh, relate to a software house. Uh, and you know, a couple of charlatans there. My experience of consultants at that point was, was terrible. So we had two different consultants in. Uh, one of them, we didn't even let him finish his presentation because the information he was giving was wrong. And another consultant further down the line, which we were using for specialist advice on how we offshore data, again, gave us fundamentally wrong information. So at that point, I completely dismissed the use of any consultancy and decided to do the project itself. So by that we, well, I, I led the project, but I stood up a, a DP lead in each of our business units. I also um, communicated with the commercial team to get them fully engaged, um, but we decided to do that ourselves. So obviously, you can't just make someone a DP lead and, and, and off you go. We had to do a bit of training. So we, we put a, a, a number of um, people that, that serviced multiple business units on, a, on the data practitioners course. Um, and then we, we made every commercial lead and DP lead uh, at least through the GDPR foundation course. So that, that's what we did first of all is we give them new terms of reference for the job, give them additional responsibilities uh, and they became the GDPR first line of defence for, for that business. Completely getting out, get up, uh, removing any, any external consultants in that. Benefit of that was they understood the business. We managed to retain the resource in house and we actually developed a really um, skilled set of people that are still here today. 
So it brought the group together. It actually, because I used the, this resource that was in the businesses, it allowed us avenues into the business to understand the businesses, to identify where the issues were, because they were at the face of that business already. So it actually managed to get us more involved, whereas I think if we use consultancy, you get that barrier, because I was a consultant myself. Uh, so costs, um, so the, the cost was, wasn't too much of an issue for, for us, obviously we, we identified that there was a training requirement, we done uh, bi-monthly get-togethers and forum, and on that forum we used it as a brainstorming session, we thrashed all the questions out, who's got issues in what business, because typically an issue in this business over here, the business over here will see the same problem. So we actually used it as a brainstorming. So there was initial costs for travel expenses and doing the training, but we're a software company. If we want to continue to sell our products to our customers, what do we need to do to our product to, to allow them to be GDPR compliant? And that's the thing um, we realised quite early on. That was a, obviously at the beginning of the finger in the air, so I could predict what it was going to be in terms of uh, resource and upskilling. But the costs have only just come out now. So uh, we've now seen a cost of 1.2 million that we didn't even expect, just in putting tweaks in our products. So simple things like include the button for, for the customer to delete a record, or for them to port the data if they need, or to enhance security around that product. So initially, we, we have been hit by costs that we, we haven't passed on to the customer because we didn't think it was in the spirit. Okay. So data mapping has been men mentioned a, a, a couple of times. But that is obviously the key thing. You, if you don't know where your data is, how can you protect it? So using this resource, uh, or, 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 the, or the resource that we had to hand, we obviously had to go out and look around the business and find out where the data was. And then from there, we had to produce an information asset register uh, and obviously data privacy impact assessment. So as a data processor, it's not your responsibility to do data privacy impact assessments, it's the controller's obligation. And it now says you don't have to do retrospective DPIAs. We, we ignored that. And we, the reason we've done that is because typically the customers we dealt with, so local authorities, uh, plus we had a whole range of different co uh, customers, they didn't have the resource to do DPIAs themselves. They wouldn't, or if they, if they wanted to do a DPIA, they would have had to come to us anyway and ask for the information to do a DPIA. So what we decided to do was, we would do a DPIA on every product that we have, and it actually highlighted a number of issues that we, we, we had to fix. So from a security point of view, it was absolutely brilliant because we now understood what products we had out there, we had the full support of the business. Uh, the business. We had the hammer to drive the project. Obviously, if you don't do this, it's the impact potentially won't be able to sell your product, or we, we, we could face this fine. So we had full support of each of the businesses, product managers, and we did find some, some key vulnerabilities that no one even knew existed because we, we've got 100 different products, uh, and that doesn't even include the hosting services that we provided uh, for those products. So some, 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 key, some key things that were highlighted, which we've now resolved. So from a security point of view, I actually sleep a lot better. So in order to do a project, uh, you can't do a project without doing a GDPR gap analysis. Uh, gap analysis. So, um, so I personally produced a gap analysis which had around um, 100 different, different, uh, di different areas on it. And that was basically the, 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 the thing that drove the project. So the business has done an initial assessment. I'm not going to say what the figures were, but I can tell you we far exceeded where I wanted to be by 25th of May. So, so I set a target to the board that by 25th of May, this is where we have to be in terms of percentage, and we've far exceeded that. So, in my opinion, the GDPR project has been very successful, considering the complexities that we've got in the business. So, embracing GDPR, um, I saw this as the business as an opportunity. Now, we weren't the only ones facing GDPR, everyone was. All of our competitors were. Um, but it was opportunity to get rid of things that we didn't need, to streamline the business, get rid of the complexities. So what we've actually done since the project started, we went down from around 35 businesses to 22. We brought businesses together because we're now using the same technologies, we're using the same services. We've actually managed to streamline our business and save money. So data retention, 
we had data that we didn't even know we had in places that we didn't even know existed. So we've, we've completely purged anything that we don't need. So from a cost point of view, if you, if you are posting material on the cloud, um, we've managed to save money in that, in that front as well. So Dynamics 365, I've got that up there. So we used, well obviously we were so segregated as a, as a division, never mind the rest of Capita, the other 270 businesses. We were, we, we were fragmented in, in, in our own division. We had uh, 25 different sales and marketing systems, all doing their own thing, doing their own communication, speaking to their own potential customers. So under the GDPR initiative, we managed to think, well, why can't we bring that together throughout the division? So we've actually implemented Dynamics 365. Um, so all of our sales and marketing, no matter which business it is, now goes through the single system. So from a GDPR point of view, any old CRM system that we had, or database, we've got rid because obviously you can't evidence, if you can't evidence the, the, um, the consent, then you expose yourself to risk. So we decided, moving forward, we're going to use a single CRM system and build it up from scratch. Put the relevant controls, get the relevant consent, have a privacy notice, making sure it's designed securely. So we've actually managed to, well, the benefit of that is our, our top management now know accurately what's, what's coming in, what's going out. So we've actually got a, a real control on our, on our sales and marketing. Uh, using our resource abilities to help customers, like I said, a lot of our customer base is local authority who don't have the skills or the resource uh, to service us. So we've actually assisted our customers meet their requirements. So if they fail, we fail. Um, we have been used, well, using the skills as an example, we, we've been the driver helping them get, get, get GDPR, uh, GDPR compliant. We've, we've gone above and beyond, but what it's done for us, it, it's, it's actually strengthened our relationships in that front as well. Um, because at some point they would have come to us with their requirements, so we got on that quite early. Opportunities against competitors. Uh, like I said, everyone's in the same boat, so if we could show or demonstrate that we took this quite serious, uh, what we're doing against our products to make it secure. Uh, the fact we'd in invested uh, 1.2 million this year just in our products to make it secure. We, we have used that, uh, but it has been um, reflected quite well with our customers. Uh, spoke about the attention with the, the senior management team, but what we've also managed to do <coughs> to, to, to act on the back of GDPR is we've actually created some new services that we didn't even know were there. So what, one of the examples is data mapping. You obviously got to know where your data is. So we actually had skills in house for a software development company, and throughout the forum. One of the business said, oh, actually, we could probably develop something. So they went away, uh, and after two weeks, they managed to put together a proof of concept of how they could deploy the data mapping tool around any file, file store environment, and actually came back and said, yes, there's personal data there. Possibly you might want to do a bit of, uh, a, a bit of um, audit. Uh, or no, there's no personal data. So we actually use that for our own GDPR compliance. However, we've now developed a tool that we can actually sell. And one of the things we were looking at is, is other data mapping services. So um, some of them were mentioned earlier today. We were also looking at Veronis, but we've decided not to invest because we've actually developed capabilities in-house. So we've saved money there, but we've also now got a tool that we can take to market. Another uh, solution that we came up with is the information asset register. Obviously, you've got to have records of processes. So, first of all, we've developed a tool that can find the data. The second thing was we developed a tool to then put that onto an information asset register. Um, so, one of our legal businesses, who are pretty much a market leader in um, case management systems uh, in the legal industry, they had a solution that could pretty much with a little bit of tinkering be used as an information asset register. It took no development time at all because we had the, we had the technology. They actually created, again within a couple of weeks, an information asset register tool. We took that to Group, showed them that Group invested and the mandate that every business around Capita had to use this tool. So what that did is it gave us, uh, again, saving money because we didn't have to go out, out, out external. We've actually got a fully automated system now which uh, gives you KPIs on what's coming up for retention policies, blah, blah, blah. 
the mapping tool was able to feed into it, so you, there was no transfer of data. And when, we've now got another product that we can take to market that we didn't even know. Uh, we've also developed workflow management tools, so uh, management of uh, obviously SARS or you've got uh, individual right, rights requests. Using the same tools and solutions that we already had, with a little bit of tinkering, we, we, we also created a, a GDPR uh, management system. Um, so the key thing with, with the information asset register tool, it was that successful. We've actually been listed by Microsoft uh, as, a, as a trusted partner for, for that product as well. So it really is getting the, the, the attention. Uh, and also the, the, there are businesses within, our, within the group now who have actually, because of the project that we've been taking, are now delivering consulting services. So that it has generated business. It, it, it isn't just a negative thing. So the future, um, the future is a bit, a bit unknown, I, I suppose, but um, there's areas I think we've got to look out for as a data processor, um, and ultimately, I want to embed the culture. So I went to a forum, uh, it was just a couple of months ago actually, and someone made a very um, peculiar comment that security and data protection will be phased out in 20 years' time, so obviously you basically said 20 years, you, you won't get a job. I thought, that, what, what a strange thing to say. But I think it's, I think it's true. So you think, back, uh, oh, even when I was a kid beyond, beyond then, we didn't think about security, we didn't think about data. Right? But you think kids nowadays, they play online, Xbox, PlayStation, they've got social media, and how many rights are getting rammed down the throats. So an example is, my, my son uh, was playing his Xbox, and someone jumped onto their session, he was, he was online, someone jumped on the session and straight away they start, I wasn't straight away, I could hear P door getting shouted, but someone joins on the session and straight away they all start shouting P door at him before, the, before this man dropped off the session. I wouldn't have even thought of that as a kid. But it's all these data privacy things that are now being integrated at an early age. When they're in industry, data protection and security is just going to be the norm for them. Think of it as, going back 100 years, how, how often would you shower? Probably, probably not very often. But now you wouldn't go out without a shower because it's just normal. And I think that's probably what's going to happen with, with security and data protection because it's been thrown at them from, from a young age. So one of the big things we're doing is the, the journey to the cloud. And the issues we're seeing with that, certainly as a processor, is we can't do anything without the permission of our controller. So we don't need to get the consent of, of data subjects, because that's, that's on the controller. But what we're finding is, uh, using the cloud, um, certainly Microsoft support services, where you've got follow the sun support, if you, even if you store your material in UK, um, if they implement follow the sun support, that could be classed as data transfer, because that support could be in whatever country is given that support to. <coughs> So what we found is that our cloud journey, which would have been before GDPR quite, quite easy to implement, we're now seeing blockers. So public sector customers cannot give permission to transfer data out of the UK. They just can't give it. So straight away, 70% of our business was, were finding issues with our cloud journey. Um, foreign markets, so uh, our, our businesses, we, we are a software company. We want to streamline our processes. One of the things we are looking at right now is using offshore, offshore support for development testing support. So from a development point of view, very easy because we've mandated you will not use any live data at all. So that's fine. So the, de the dev and test is okay. However, the support, if these people are developing our services, they're the ones who've got the skills to offer the support. And what we've, we've actually been given some some key legal advice which has said, even as support, um, think back to the screen prints people given us for support. If that support is in India or in any other non-European country, we can't do that. So it's actually affected our five-year business plan which was to offshore as much as we can to India. It's that GDPR has actually affected us in that way because we can't. Um, one of the things we are, we are preparing for, and I'm not sure if anyone's come across it yet, but the GDPR kite map. Um, 
So we have over 100 different products at the moment, and that, that doesn't include the, the host and, 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 and the services we've got. So we've actually thought ahead and gone, well, what, what's coming? And the ICO have announced that there is going to be some form of claim map. So we've developed a, a gap analysis on security requirements on our products that we think need to be key, developed into the product for our customers to want to buy it off us. So we have done that as part of the GDPR program and, and, and our products are, are in a very good position now. However, we still don't know what this kite map is going to look like and it's, it's, all, it's effectively going to be something like a G, a, a, an ISO 27001 is advertised for a business. Our product will need this kite map to show that it, that it is secure for the process of personal data. So that's one thing we, we are waiting for. E-privacy regulation, that's something that's going to be coming. Um, so where you've got the GDPR, and it's, we've already spoke about legitimate interest. Le legitimate interest allows you to process personal data um, until you're told not to. So if you can prove that, you, that you've got a legitimate interest, you're allowed to process, as long as you give them a, a privacy notice, the ability to enforce the rights, you can keep processing until they say stop. That's in direct conflict, uh, conflict of the e-privacy regulation, which is coming out soon. So the e-privacy regulation says if you communicate with anyone over oh, electronically, email, you have to have consent. So where your sales and marketing uh, uh, um, businesses might be affected is if you are going down the legitimate interest route, when EPR comes out, and the fines are the same as GDPR, <coughs> it directly conflicts at the moment. So what I'm hoping is the EPR mirrors the GDPR, which says you can go down with just insurance. But that's one thing we're obviously keep an eye on. Uh, obviously the case law, so everything we've done so far, uh, we, we've had limited consultancy. Yes, we, we've had a lot of legal advice, but it's all been interpretation of GDPR, and I'm not, I'm not a legal expert, it, it, it's been my, my honest opinion. However, what, what we are gonna see, uh, and obviously on the 25th of May, Max Schrems um, put in, it was, it was, what was it for? Yeah, one, two, yeah. Four, four different um, cases now put in against GDPR, totaling about seven billion. As this develops, it's ultimately going to create the case law that we don't currently have to back up uh, our interpretation. So there's definitely going to be some case law there. But one of the ways we've actually been affected by Cambridge Analytica directly is one of our pro products, uh, it, it actually looks at the internet and it, it predicts things that you didn't even know what happened. So an example of that is um, all of a sudden pictures appear on Instagram of a fire in a port. Someone steps, and that's all it could be. So it could be the, the geographic location, a picture, or somebody even tweets in, there's a fire in the port. And what it does, it, it, it looks at information from a whole raft of services, including Facebook, including uh, Instagram, um, Chat, chat sites, you, you name it. And basically, an investor might use that and say, oh, there's a fire in this port. The stock price is probably going to go down there, or not, there's not going to be a delivery of oil. Um, and because of Cambridge Analytica, like we've always had the consent to, to, to do this, we've always had the security around it because of what it is. But as a result of Cambridge Analytica, we've started to see already tightening controls. Uh, which is which is affecting some of our products and services. So I think as we move forward, um, there's going to be more examples of that. And um, this, the, the the seven billion case that's gone against uh, the, these billion uh, the, these companies here is certainly going to um, be one to watch. So one last thing is um, someone just mentioned uh, Brexit just just before just before I came up here. I think that is one thing to watch as well, and mainly because I'm hoping we'd be okay, but there's still where, where the old, where the last remaining uh, British or uh, BPO company, which is business process house, also. Um, so we are predominantly based in the UK, but we don't have any foreign uh, foreign bases yet or foreign markets. So Brexit is one to watch because it says to transfer data out of a European country, you have that, that entity has to have an adequacy decision. Um, and because we have something in the UK called RIPA, which is the Investigatory Powers Act, and basically our intelligence services sweep up this data. Uh, at the moment, technically, 
we shouldn't really get an adequacy decision in the UK. So at the moment we're covered because we, we're, part, we're part of the EU. But when we Brexit, what, what happens then? So I'm hope, well, well we, we've, we've implemented the DPA 18. Um, I'm hoping by the time Brexit occurs, we've got either an adequacy decision or something like UK Privacy Shield. But that is something to consider because if, if we do a lot of work with European countries or, or European business, that could be one of the things that, that, that tips them and says, we're going to go with a European um, business instead of the UK. So I think it is something to, 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 to watch. Has anyone got any questions about it? 